It seems like Crystal's long-awaited return to the K-pop industry is finally happening. On February 22nd, it was announced that FX's Crystal has signed with a new agency, Beasts and Natives Alike, also known as BANA. In a statement to the public, the agency asked everyone to look forward to their collaboration with Crystal, and looking at the company's history, it seems like they're the perfect fit for an artist like her. BANA is an entertainment agency which was started by important members of SM Entertainment's old A&R team, the same team that collaborated with Crystal when she was active as an FX member. The company pride themselves on breaking genre boundaries and are committed to planning various projects in music, video, fashion, exhibitions, and performances, so Crystal's experience in acting and singing perfectly fits with their diverse options. It looks like they have already taken a few steps to remind people that Crystal used to be an idol singer. The day the announcement came out, Crystal posted a cover of the song I'm Coming Back, originally performed by Lala Hathaway on her newly opened SoundCloud account. It has gotten fans excited, but there's more to it as there's also the possibility of a collaboration between her and Min Hee Jin for her alleged new release. For all of you that don't know, Min Hee Jin has strong connections with Bana, having collaborated with them since her days at SM Entertainment. However, even though they went to different companies, they still work together to this day. Bana is involved in producing for New Jeans alongside Hybe's in-house team, so fans are hopeful that Crystal working with Bana might lead to a reunion with Min Hee Jin for creative direction, especially since Min Hee Jin has previously referred to Crystal as her muse and the two are very close friends. It doesn't matter who she works with though, as fans have been promised solo music from her ever since 2017. So this year, it looks like Crystal finally found the right time and songs to promote herself as a solo idol. We also have updates about trainee A's JJ for the first time ever since the team's disbandment in December of 2022. JJ was one of the members who got a lot of attention as the group was gearing up for debut due to his many talents, so when he basically disappeared once trainee A dissolved, a lot of fans were devastated. However, we finally got news about him after two years, all because of SM Entertainment. Before the SM Town concert in Japan, a fan noticed that some SM trainees at Gimpo Airport were traveling to Japan to watch the show. It seems like JJ was among the trainees as a fan who happened to be present at the Gimpo Airport noticed him there. Other fans also went on to share plenty of videos and pictures of JJ from the airport and the show, and it got a lot of attention on social media. But we cannot blame them at all, as up until this point, they were afraid that JJ had given up on his dreams to become a K-pop idol, so to see him be part of a company like SM Entertainment was more than exciting. The funny thing is that some people think that JJ's sister hinted at it earlier by posting about going to SM Town Live. The update has made a lot of people happy and we can't wait to see what SM has in store for him. In other news, Itzy's Leah has gotten everyone in tears as she made an appearance as an attendee at the Born to Be Tour concert in Seoul. As you may know, Leah has been on hiatus from activities ever since September due to health concerns. Because of this, she has missed an Itzy comeback and has been laying low ever since, but that doesn't mean that the bond between the girls has gotten any weaker. This became evident during the second show of Itzy's tour when the audience noticed Leah sitting among them. The fans were extremely happy to see Leah, but it doesn't compare to the emotions that the members felt when they saw her. They got obviously emotional when Leah showed herself, if we were to judge by the shake in their voice when they were talking. Even Cher Young's parents, who were sitting next to her, got teary-eyed when Leah greeted the members from the stands. The members even posted pictures of all of them together after the show was over, and the smiles on everyone's faces are priceless. We can't wait to see all the members back on stage again as the stage feels empty without Leah. Now let's move on to the news that got everyone shocked. Espa's Karina and actor Lee Jae-wook are dating. Dispatch released a report on February 27th saying that the two met last month during Milan Fashion Week in Italy at the Prada show and were attracted to each other. An insider even said, I think it's fair to say they fell in love at first sight. They fell in love from the moment they met at the fashion show. They continued to meet each other both in Milan and Seoul despite their busy schedules. Dispatch reported that the two usually met up in Jay Wook's neighborhood and around his house, due to the fact that Karina still lives in a dorm. After Dispatch's report came out, Jay Wook's agency confirmed that they were seeing each other with good feelings and urged everyone to be respectful of their personal lives. SM also released a brief statement in which they explained that the two are getting to know each other. The news was surprising, mostly because nobody would have thought that the couple got so close during the fashion show. However, most netizens were happy for them, saying that they really suited each other. Others criticized Dispatch for exposing the relationship so early and making it public, saying that they should have let it establish properly. It's only been a month and they should be allowed to date each other in peace, outside of the public eye. Either way, congratulations to the happy couple. Lastly, some very important news, Lucas has finally addressed his scandal in a recent part of his new documentary. Since he's about to debut as a solo artist soon, the company knew they couldn't just let him come back without dealing with his almost career-ending scandal first. They explained this through a 22-minute video on Lucas's YouTube channel, 
channel, which serves as the first part of his documentary called Freeze. He begins by explaining what he had been doing since he was pushed into hiatus and it left netizens very divided. The documentary starts by showing Lucas's life during his time away from the public eye after he went on hiatus. Then he talks about the controversy, saying that the incident changed his personality and thoughts and goes on to explain how the scandal impacted his mental health. He shared that he went through a tough time and fell into depression, spending six months at his home, not leaving the house. According to him, he didn't feel like doing anything since he had a lot on his mind and mentioned that he even started losing his hair due to stress and anxiety. In addition to showing physical signs of stress, Lucas talked about his feelings over the six months, including some very heartbreaking words referring to him contemplating the worst decisions one can make in tragic situations like this one. He said, I had terrible thoughts. I was so sorry I wanted to die because honestly, it was all my fault. Had I not done that, this wouldn't have happened. He stated he did everything because he was not thinking clearly and apologized to everyone. Lucas said that he disappointed everyone, mentioning that there's no excuse for what he did. He also shared that his perspective has changed and he realized a lot of negative things about himself that needed to be fixed. The documentary got a lot of mixed reactions from everyone. After all, it was the first time since the scandal happened that Lucas openly addressed it. Some fans pointed out the inconsistencies between what Lucas was saying and how it was translated to English. According to a Twitter user, Lucas didn't say, had I not done that, this wouldn't have happened, but if I hadn't done it that way, it probably wouldn't be like this, which would change everything. This would mean that Lucas wasn't admitting to any wrongdoings, just apologizing for the way the scandal was handled. In addition to that, when the English subtitles in the video read, nothing can justify what I've done, the Twitter user alleges that Lucas actually says, no matter what reason I had, I shouldn't have done it that way. This again alludes to regrets about how things were done instead of something he actually did, but fans are angry that SM translated his words in a way to make him look guilty in the eyes of the public when there were numerous instances when some of the allegations were debunked. One of his supporters wrote, The fact that the company purposely worded the English translation like this to profit off his situation, not caring that they're throwing Lucas under the bus in the process. His fans are also saying that if Lucas were to regret one thing, it's sharing the photo of the Sasang on Bubble. To them, it's just strange that the week after he posted the picture, he was involved in such a big scandal due to the same Sasang's accusations. Not to mention that the whole thing was very vague, which gives room to everyone to make their own assumptions about what happened and what Lucas was admitting to. But to fans, the documentary proves that he's innocent because after all, SM is willing to go to such lengths to defend his reputation even after everything he was accused of. On the other hand, a large portion of Twitter users and some international netizens aren't at all happy about his return. A Twitter user said, not even big SM idols have a documentary and Lucas has now a documentary to make people feel sorry about him. Some Korean netizens are also calling him shameless for coming back after everything, saying that he should have just laid low and lived a normal life. However, the criticism has gone way too far, with some people even resorting to threats and jokes about his life. Soon after Lucas's official social media accounts were set up, a Threads user posted a fake announcement impersonating Wavy's label and claiming that Lucas had passed away from natural causes. The post expressed regret about the natural circumstances of his supposed passing and suggested that it should have happened in a more cruel way. What's even more disturbing is that numerous netizens were laughing along in the replies of the post, which is just inhumane on so many levels. Thankfully, there's some sensible people out there who were rightfully angry at the post. Even people who don't like Lucas spoke against it and pointed out that jokes like this shouldn't be made, no matter how much you dislike someone. Another user said, You can joke around all you want, but this one is too much. What kind of a person are you? You've lost your mind from standing idols. You can believe whatever you want about whether Lucas is innocent, but it seems like people got so involved in the scandal that they forgot that first and foremost, he's a human being with emotions and feelings. The fact that there are people wishing such horrible things to him is shocking and we hope that SM takes legal action against everyone who does this.